Thanks for tuning in to Bourbon Drop. I'm your host, Marvin. Today, we've got Frey Ranch, straight out of Nevada, single barrel, barrel strength, pick from Sip Whiskey. Never had it before. Can't wait to get into it. Bottle Drop, Bottle Drop, Bottle Drop. Never had Frey Ranch before. This is a pick, single barrel barrel strength from sipwhiskey.com. No, I'm not sponsored by sipwhiskey.com. If they want to sponsor me, I'm not stopping them, but at this point, I'm not. Um, look, the Sip Whiskey single barrel barrel strength store pick is excellent. I'm going to say that right off the top. If you don't want to stick around for the rest, just know that it's excellent, but I'm going to give you the nose and notes and the taste of notes. You know how I do it. but. This thing was so complex, I actually had to get a pad, a pen and a pad out to write down the uh, nosing and tasting notes. So I'm gonna pour some up for you right now. I'll go ahead and get into the nosing notes just really off of what I remember and what I'm getting out of the glass, and then I'll get the pad out. The bottle itself <laughs> is ridiculous. If you own Peerless, Peerless is one of the heaviest bottles that I've ever had with the heaviest cork. The cork in this thing, it's its not as heavy as the cork with Peerless, but that's all glass. That's how much glass is in there. It's got a beautiful design. It's got a beautiful design on the cork. It's got a beautiful design on the front of the bottle. The design of the bottle is great. Uh, the juice inside is even better. This is one of the few where the juice matches the bottle design. I'll get into the proof right now. It's 125.351, it looks like. So they get really specific. And one thing that I noticed was, I ordered this from Sip Whiskey and I also ordered the Woodenville uh, single barrel store pick or single barrel pick from Sip Whiskey. And they got really specific with that one too. So you're gonna find that out when I get into the mash bill. But it does come in very, very complex. The flavors are all over the place, but well-rounded. Let's get into it. I get apple, apricot, clay. That was one of the few things that I got. It was clay, maybe a little bit of hay underneath. Maybe even some pineapple. I didn't write that down. Definitely pepper. It's a four grain. Now, I'm gonna give you the notes that I got out of the glass. Let's go to the pad. So, Frey Ranch on the nose. Very sweet, which it is. Sour green apple. Sour green like, like Laffy Taffy or sour green like the flat Jolly Ranchers that you used to get from either the candy truck or the corner store. Um, some dried mango, dried apricot, some clay, a sweet bread, hay, sweet plum, raisin, pepper, corn, a light corn husk. So that's that's what I got from the, I mean, this thing is come, I, I really sat here and I couldn't believe all of the nosing notes that were coming out of this glass. I, it just, it, it blew my mind. The only thing that I've had as complex as the Frey Ranch is the five malt whiskey from uh, Woodford Reserve. And I don't even remember the nose being this complex. I mean, that nose is just great. It's highly fruity. I mean, it is sliced green apples, apricot, raisins, plums, everything that I said, the corn husk is like right underneath and I think that's where I get a little bit of that hay and corn husk from. Yeah, light peaches, dried mango. Wow. I mean, I've, I've got to give it to Frey Red. I've got to give it to, well, one, 
give it to the people who at Sip Whiskey pick the single barrel and two, give it to Freight Ranch. Now let's get into the four grain mash bill. 10% soft white winter wheat, 11.4% white rye, 12% two row barley, and 66.6% .6 corn. Non-GMO corn at that. Now they say non-GMO because they grow all of their own grains on their property. They've got over 1,500 acres where they just grow everything and they, they call it a grain to glass experience. I, I really like that, I really do. Now let's get into the palette. It's, 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 man. This is one of the best bourbons I've, I've had. I, it's, it's all over the place. The experience in the mouth is just ridiculous. It's got fruit, it's got chocolate, it's got oak, it's got barrel char. Oh my God, I mean, it's, and then it, the finish is super long. It hits the tongue, it dances on the tongue, it's sweet on the front, it gets to the mid and it just opens up. All of those fruits come out. The sour green apples transfer over to the palate. Let me read to you what I wrote down. Spicy, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. Uh, very sweet, very sweet on the front and the mid, a lot of raisins, um, a drying horn cusp, husk crosses over to the palate. The finish is long, very long. It's char, it's all over the tongue from front to back. It turns into a cocoa powder and a dark chocolate, then leather. This thing is all over the place. I mean, it is one of the most complex bourbons. It's not just simple brown sugar vanilla cream. No, it's not just that. It is everything that I just said, spicy, sweet, the fruits transfer over to the palate, the barrel char, the leather, sweet on the front, sweet on the mid, uh, the corn husk crosses over to the palate. Some people might call it an earthy uh, note. Some people might call it a grassy note. It seems to come off like corn husk to me. Let's go in for one more sip. Yeah. All of those flavors transfer over. The spice really kicks in in the back. It hits you in the nose just a little bit, kicks in in the back. That chocolate and char just lasts and lasts and it just goes on and on and on forever. I'm really digging this. I'm really digging it. Let's get into the breakdown. All right, so there's not gonna be a chase, so I'm not even gonna say anything about a chase. Would I give this to a new bourbon drinker? This right here is not something that I would give to a new, inexperienced bourbon drinker simply because it is very complex and it does come in hot. I mean, like I said, at 125.351 proof, um, it comes in hot, but someone who's more experienced will know how to deal with it. Uh, it definitely warms you up down in the chest. It does hit the throat with a little bit of heat and spice, so I think that might turn a new bourbon drinker off. Uh, would I pay over retail? Now, this did retail on Sip Whiskey for $89.99, basically 90 bucks. I think it is priced uh, appropriately. I don't think I would pay any higher than what they're asking for. I mean, this is a very good pour. Uh, 90 bucks, is it a little steep? Most store picks or internet these days, uh, sip whiskey picks are going to be a little more expensive because they feel like they're giving you a different variation of the original product. Would I always like to keep a bottle of this on a bar? This thing is something that I would love to keep on the bar simply because I can give it to an experienced bourbon drinker and just ask him to give me a flavor rundown. Whoever I give it to, he or she should be able to just pour this in a glass, nose it, give me a million notes, then go into the glass, taste it, and give me even more notes. I mean, that's how complex it is. Not to mention the fact that it is good. It is very good. I would love to keep a bottle of this on the bar. If I ever run out, if Sip Whiskey does have some, I'll order another one. With that being said, let the whiskey flow. Never run out unless you're headed to a drop. Till next time.